Hi, my name is Brooke Renfro, and today's presentation is on the NSPE's Code of Ethics for Engineers, or more specifically, the second fundamental canon. So who is the NSPE? The NSPE is the National Society of Professional Engineers, which was created and founded in 1934. Ever since then, they've been dedicated to serving the interests of professional engineers, regardless of their area of expertise. Some of the things that they do for engineers is build their recognition, unify engineers across the country, and most notably, they stand against unethical practices. This is the main reason why they created the Code of Ethics for Engineers. So before we look at the second fundamental canon, we should be asking ourselves, what are ethics? Well, ethics are the principles of conduct governing individuals and groups of people. In layman's terms, it's how we determine between wrong and right or good and bad. So now let's take a look at the second fundamental canon. According to Code of Ethics, engineers and the fulfillment of their professional duties shall perform services only in the area of their competence. Now let's take a look at some of the rules of practice for this second fundamental canon. Engineers should have the qualifications to perform a task. They should also have the competence when signing a document, and they should accept projects only if qualified professionals approve each technical segment. Now, let's take a look at these in greater detail. Qualifications. This is what makes one suitable to perform a job or activity, such as the amount of experience they have or the amount of education that they have. So, for example, Let's say there's a bridge project and I, an industrial engineer, am asked to be a part of the design team for this project. What should I do? Should I accept this job? No, it would be unethical to accept this job because I, as an industrial engineer, do not have the skills to design a bridge. The only person that should be taking this job is maybe an architect or a civil engineer. So this is just one of the ways that ethics plays into it life as an engineer. Next, signing of documents. The signing of documents requires competence because you need sufficient knowledge of what you're assigning. Also, you should only sign a document if you have prepared it and you had direction and control when preparing this document. And finally, acceptance of a project. If you are in charge of a project, and want to get it approved and signed, the technical aspects of a project have to be prepared by qualified engineers. And these same engineers should sign off on the document. So for example, let's go back to the bridge project. If I'm a project manager, who is allowed to sign what? If I'm signing off, if I'm the final person signing off at a document, the technical aspects of that document should be signed off by their respective qualified engineer. So should an accountant be signing off on the blueprints for this bridge? Absolutely not. Should a civil engineer be signing off on the master budget? No. So this is just another example of how ethics plays into engineering. Well, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Thank you.